see if I can do this. Ooh. Oh, kilograms. <laughs> Who uses kilograms? All right, guys, we got a lot to go over with this bike. Got another custom e-bike build. Um, and this is a super unique build, so I, there's a lot to cover with this one. If you're new to this channel, I'm Johnny Nerdout. I'm a custom e-bike builder. We make bikes specific to your needs, specific to exactly what you want. Instead of trying to shoehorn you into one of these pre-made e-bikes that are way expensive, we build something exactly to your spec almost all the time for less than what you would have paid for. Let's go into the, uh, into the use case for what this customer was looking for. They live in the, uh, in the mountains in Virginia and they wanted something that would go up the side of a mountain. They're gonna be off-road a lot, so that's why we went with fat tires. And this is the Gravity Bullseye bike. This is a, I don't know, it's like a five, $600 bike, something like that. You go on uh, bikesdirect.com. We originally went with a, the state fat bike that I carry here at Johnny Nerd Out, but I'll get into it. We had to switch to this bike because the dropout on that bike was too big and it wouldn't fit the uh, internally geared hub that we went with on this one. So this one, we had, to, we had to do an audible at the last minute. So this person was looking for reliability. They also wanted to be able to climb hills. My immediate thought was, let's go single speed chain. They wanted to do the internally geared hub. Three speed, I immediately went to three speed. This is the Sturmy Archer three speed. These are really strong, really, really tough. And then we went with the BBS HD 120 millimeter kit to power everything. They wanted to have maximum range. Like I don't want to be out in the woods and run out of battery. So we went with the biggest battery that I have is the 52 volt 28 amp hour. That's almost 1500 watt hours, which is like a one and a half kilowatt. It's like a Toyota Prius battery right here. Tons of range. Tons of power, tons of reliability, tons of feature, feature and functional proof. So I'll go, I'll start at the front, we'll go to the back, kind of talk about the pros and cons of, you know, if you're trying to build something like this yourself, why you may want to go with a, you know, an alternative or something like that. So these are the 26 by four inch tires. They're not the fattest that you can get, but they're definitely fat tires. This is a, a fat tire bike usually starts at about three and a half inch and it goes up to, I think there's some that are like 5.9 inch. So these are, these are pretty fat. These are gonna be able to get you up anywhere. These are gonna have traction anywhere. Loose sand, loose muck, deadfall, all that. These are, these are a good tire for that. It does not have a suspension fork, which good and bad. In my opinion, with fat tires like this, this size tire 26 by 4.0, maybe a front suspension isn't quite necessary because you could always just let some PSI out of here and that will kind of act as a suspension. Obviously, if you let too much out, your handling starts to get really wonky. You get a lot of oversteer, I guess. Oversteer? Yeah. So yeah, it's a rigid front fork. Rigid front forks are, you know, rigid frame in general, whether it's front fork or rear suspension, is just more efficient. You're not getting energy loss through the suspension. So there's a trade-off there. We went with a light kit. This has got the front and rear deluxe light kit that you that I, I carry at johnnynerdout.com. And again, links to all these products that I'm talking about are gonna be in the description. So if you're ever like, what are you talking about? Go to the description, check it out there. Try to make this as easy as possible. If you have any other questions, leave me a comment below. This is nice, this is a really nice light kit. It has front light that's really bright, it's about 600 lumens. It has a built-in horn into this light, and it's loud. That's loud. It goes to the back, there's a tail light here and a brake light. So when you hit the brakes, it actually lights up. It also has turn indicators built into this light. People are always like, well, I don't wanna have like a big motorcycle. It's like, no, the, the indicators are built into this light. It's, it's nice. I cannot scream about the benefits of this light kit enough. I love it. It's available for the Bafang and the CYC motor kits. We upgraded this bike to hydraulic brakes. Um, again, these brake kits are available at Johnny Nerd Out. These plug directly into the wiring harness from the Bifang. They also work with CYC as well. And actually the Tongsheng motor kits too. So these are really nice. They're like 90 bucks. Upgrades your, your standard mechanical brakes to hydraulic brakes. Doubles your stopping power, I would say. And it talks with the motor. So when you squeeze it, cuts power. You don't need to adjust anything. You guys have done the glue-on sensors. Those suck. These are awesome. These are the way to go. I really recommend those. It's got the three speed hub up there. So here's the switch. It just, this is first gear, second gear, third gear. Really easy. We're gonna do a performance test here. I'll show you how this thing hill climbs and the top speed with this setup. This is the 18 tooth on the rear, 18 tooth cog. Those come in different size cogs. So 
even though you got a three speed, I think it's uh, I think it's 150% increase. So it's like 50% in first gear, 100% in second gear and 150% in third, I believe is a gear ratio on these three speeds. But you could change this cog out to get either better height, you know, you change that power band. So you make the, the motor power is either gonna give you more top speed, but less hill climbing or more hill climbing, less top speed. Like if you went with a 24 tooth, which is what we originally wanted to do. Right now it's on the stock 18. I ordered the 24 tooth from Amazon. I've been waiting two weeks for it. And now it says it's delayed. So if I, I talked to the customer and they're like, let's just send it like this. And if it comes, just send it to me. I'll swap it out if I need it. So ideally we wanted to go with the 24 tooth because he wanted this thing to be a mule. That's what he said. The whole, the whole theme of this build was I want this thing to be a mule. I want to be able to pack stuff on here. We put on this, uh, the Toe Peak, Two Peak MTX 2.0 rear rack on this. So he could outfit this thing with bags. He could put stuff on it. He could put a giant cooler back here, whatever you want. He could go for days probably with this battery capacity. He was looking at like the Rambo, all those like, you know, those pre-made e-bike e builds. And those are gonna be like five grand for what he wanted. This is right around three grand, actually a little bit less. Uh, shipping and, and labor and stuff bumped it up to about three grand. But if you were building this yourself, way under three grand, for about two grand, you could get this, do it yourself. If you wanted to cut some corners, if you didn't want to do the internally geared hub, for example, keep it stock. The benefit though of going with the internally geared hub is that you're able to use that single speed chain and the single speed chain is a lot stronger. You know, it's wider, it's thicker. They're more easily available in my opinion. You could go to a Target, a Walmart probably and get a single speed chain. If you had an eight, nine, 10 speed chain, sometimes you're in luck with, if they have that speed, sometimes you're not. We put a gear shift sensor on it, even though it's only three speeds and you're not supposed to shift under load with an internally geared hub, I still put one of these things on. I would put one of these on no matter, regardless with a Bafang motor system. With a Caden sensor, these things just make it night and day. We went with the Lecky 28 tooth because again, he was going for mule everything about this is mule let's make this a, a workhorse a pack pack mule 28 tooth let's go as small as possible so that it's geared more towards torque than top speed he's not trying to be on the drag race on this thing he wants this thing to be a workhorse so 28 tooth thought about doing the 36 but the offset on these things are the same with the leckies the 28 or the 36 it's the same offset so we weren't really gaining anything with that so 28 all the all, all day 28 all day and then we put in a uh just a chain tensioner in the back here, uh, just to keep this from, from flopping. All right, let's go do a performance test. Let's see how this thing does top speed, and then uh, let's see how this thing climbs hills. All right, so you can see 30 miles an hour still in, in high gear, throttle only, plenty fast, plenty fast. I, I will say in high gear pedaling, I started to top out at around 18 miles an hour pedaling. I mean, I probably could have got it up to about 20 if I wanted to look like a cartoon character, but throttle, this motor will spin way faster than you could pedal. So I was able to get up to about 30 miles an hour just throttle. And you can see hill climbing. I cannot emphasize enough that the hill that this is on, this is at a local school where they built it up. It's, it's like a 45 degree angle. You will not see that hill in the wild, nor should you really be climbing up a hill like that in the wild. And if you ever are, I suggest going back and forth. But this thing was able to get up, up it uh, without me helping it at all, just throttle. No hub motor is gonna be able to do that unless you're running probably 72 volts. And even then it would be like a, eh, maybe. So this performs like a 72 volt hub motor, I would say stock with this. This is running 52 volt. And again, if you geared this taller, if you went to 24 tooth over the 18, that's like a 30, 33% increase in, in torque essentially. You're changing that gearing. So this thing would go up even faster, but I think this gearing is gonna be fine for his usage. I did use a Lecky five millimeter motor spacer here. And yes, you're, I was not able to use the outer lock ring on this motor, a lot of people are, uh, lately have been asking me about, they're like, ah, I can't put the outer lock ring on, is that okay? And it's totally okay. That outer lock ring is pretty much just for, you know, it, it does protect the inner lock ring, but it's mostly for decor decoration. It makes it look nice. So by not putting it on, as long as you're able to get enough threads on with the inner lock ring and this motor doesn't move, if you could put your weight on it and it's not gonna fall down, 
you're good. This, this motor's not going anywhere. Cool, all right, we'll head to johnnynerdout.com if you got any other questions. Oh, let me, get a, let me get a weight. Okay, let's weigh this thing. A lot of people are always like, how much does it weigh? You're not supposed to ask a bike how much it weighs, by the way. That's rude. Okay, let's see. 65 pounds. So, not bad. Not bad considering it's got a Prius battery on it. <laughs> so 65 pounds, fully decked out. That's awesome. All right, like I was saying, guys, if you have any questions, go to johnnynerdout.com. If, if you want help booking this out, you're like, what did you use in this? Book a consultation. I'd be happy to go over it with you. Uh, I could build an invoice for you. Do whatever. I could help you get all this stuff squared away. Uh, all right, take it easy, guys.